Welcome. I'm Dawn Mathis with In-Situ LifeWorks. And uh, I wanted to share with you before today's podcast a story that, um, that I received from a retired minister, and I thought it might, it might uh, fit in here for us. I'm going to read it to you. So in a small American town, a band of squirrels had become quite a problem at the local churches. The Presbyterian Church called a meeting to decide what to do about the squirrel infestation. After much prayer and consideration, they concluded that the squirrels were predestined to be there and they shouldn't interfere with God's will. At the Baptist Church, the squirrels had taken an interest in the baptistry. The deacons met and decided to put a water slide in the baptistry and let the squirrels drown themselves. The <laughs> The squirrels love the slide and unfortunately knew instinctively how to swim, so twice as many squirrels showed up the following week. The Lutheran Church decided that they were not in a position to harm any of God's creatures, so they humanely trapped the squirrels and set them free near the Baptist Church. Two weeks later, the squirrels were back when the Baptists took down their water slide. The Methodist Church tried a much more unique path by setting out pans of whiskey around their church in an effort to kill the squirrels with alcohol poisoning. They sadly learned just how much damage a band of drunk squirrels can do. But the Catholic Church came up with an even more creative strategy. They baptized all the squirrels and made them members of the church. And now they only see them at Christmas and Easter. <laughs> Not too much was heard from the Jewish synagogue. They took the first squirrel and circumcised him, and they haven't seen a squirrel since. Oh, I love that story. So we all have different ways that we deal with tough terrain in our lives. Ways we were taught, ways that were shaped by our experiences, and perhaps maybe ways we learned from our religious and spiritual backgrounds. I want to share with you a new way to consider, a way to handle life's tough terrains. And it comes from the curricula that I coach and teach into called Standing Firm When Your World is Shaking. And why this is important to you is this. You can learn to master circumstances in your life that previously would have derailed you from being the best version of yourself for hours, days, weeks, months, years. Those things are now just a mere blip on your radar. Some object or obstacle that you can easily overcome with time and with taking these steps. Life is short and we never get a do-over. I want to share with you a story of how you might feel stuck in your circumstances right now. It's a story I wrote about a woman named Sylvia and I'm going to read it from my journal for you. I met a woman recently at a conference. We introduced ourselves and what we did for work. She told me that she had lost her mother, her husband, and, all, and her son all in a period of one year. I could not even fathom the level of loss or pain she was feeling. I felt compassion toward her. Throughout that first day, I heard her tell this story of loss to everyone she met. She said little else in the times that we had to network and share ideas. When I had a chance to speak with her again, I asked her how long it had been since she had experienced this loss. Six years, she replied sadly, and the pain etched in her face reflected back to me as if the loss was brand new and fresh. And to her, it was. 
I imagine that her heart and her life, much like her face, must be etched and frozen in that time six years ago. I could see that she was stuck. She did not know she could move to a new place and still honor those she lost. So you have situations in your life. They're real. They're scary. They're painful. At the level of fact. And here's the thing. You can nurse, curse, and rehearse those circumstances. You can let them define you. You can let that be your story. Or you can try something else. You can lean into a truth. And that truth is that there is a power in you that is far greater than any circumstance, condition, or event in your life. And that power may just need to be discovered or dust it off, or you just may need a different perspective. So the one thing I want you to take away from today is that in this hero's journey we're going to talk about, that you can live your best life by seeking to find the gift in that journey. Joseph Campbell, in his two books, The Hero Has a Thousand Faces and The Hero's Journey, tells us that across cultures and human history, we all walk the same terrain, experience the same stages as those who traveled before us. You are not alone. And Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher, once said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So let's begin our journey. In this podcast, I'm going to give you an overview of the steps you can take along your hero's journey and learn how to stand firm when your world is shaking. So the first step is called the dark night. St. John of the Cross, a 16th century Catholic priest, mystic, and writer, calls this not so favorable time in our lives, the dark night of the soul. And in his book, he does not say he, he says that not if you have this experience, but when, because we all do. So a dark night could be anything that causes us constriction or discomfort, a job loss, not getting the promotion you expected, a relationship coming to an end, a medical diagnosis, the loss of a pet, a person, a pay raise, even a pandemic. One thing these all have in common is that they're real experiences and they may shake you. And here's the good news. The dark night is the foundation for your growth. Mary Morrissey, world-renowned transformational speaker, coach, writer, and my personal mentor, says it this way. The content of your life is the curriculum of your evolution. The content of your life is the curriculum of your evolution. Wow. That'll make you feel a bit better about the struggle that you're having. It's not for naught. So steps to take in in this dark night. Give it a name. 
Name the experience or the person that is challenging you. Dare the dark. Stare it in the face. It becomes less formidable when you do. Joseph Campbell said it this way, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And then I would also add, you don't get bigger and better in life if everything goes your way. So know that you're more than that, more than that experience, more than that situation or circumstance. The truth is that your point of power is greater than any circumstance, situation, or event in your life. So let's allow these circumstances to help us build muscle. So the second step, first step, dark night. Second step, we call it the hero's journey. So have you, have you ever planned a trip uh, or planned for a backpacking journey, and you made a list of everything you needed, and you laid out all kinds of gear, clothing, food, snacks, maps, maybe a luxury item or two. And you realize not all of it fits, or it's too heavy, or some of it just would not serve you or be useful to you on your journey. Some of that was meant to be left behind. So in this hero's journey, there are three phases that we go through. The departure, the initiation, and the return. So in the departure, you cross the threshold. You lose some, someone or you got a diagnosis. Something happens, some circumstance in your life. Whatever it is, you are leaving behind the life that you once knew. You're called to a greater life. And if you answer the call, if you honor your circumstances, things go more smoothly. They're not easy. They just go more smoothly because you're not resisting. And if you refuse the call, Unpleasant circumstances that you have may ramp up. Have you ever noticed how life gives you the same lessons until you learn from them? And here's, here's a quote that may help you remember this as well. What you resist persists. So answer the call. So the first phase, departure, the next phase is the initiation, and we call this the sequence of becoming or the road of trials. Things feel too big to handle. You realize that parts of you, some of your thoughts, will not serve you in this next phase. And you must learn to neutralize the charge that you, ex that you assign to this exper experience. Neutralize the charge. And that's how things get smaller in our eyes. And this is what Viktor Frankl did when he was in a concentration camp in Nazi Germany. He used this philosophy. It's what kept him alive when he endured maltreatment, malnutrition, lack of medical care, lack of clothing, exposure to elements, and horrible treatment. And he wrote a book about it called Man's Search for Meaning. So here we are, hero's journey, first phase departure, second phase um, initiation, and the third phase is the return. This journey has changed us. We do not return as the same person that we were when we left. You've learned to rise above your circumstances. The journey has grown you. You have gained wisdom and power, developed abilities, and you've developed the capacity to neutralize your circumstances and their constriction on your heart. 
This hero's journey has actually allowed you to discover the intersection of your human nature with your divine nature. So the third step is harvesting the good. So you don't have to like your circumstances. Most of us don't. But you do want to make sure that you count it for something good. I mean, if you're going through it, you might as well get something good out of it. One of my coaching colleagues, his name is David, said this about his own dark night, his own hero's journey, his own transformation. I didn't come this far to come this far. I love that. I didn't come this far to come this far. Give me the gift. You can allow your experiences to take you forward instead of taking you down. You want to make sure you get the gift. So get to that place inside of you that wants the gift. That part of you that refuses to leave the gift behind. There is a saying, when we seek to find recovery in our suffering, we have the gift. Let me say that again. When we seek to find recovery in our suffering, we have the gift. So the final step, the first is the dark night. The second is the hero's journey. The third is harvesting the good. The fourth, opportunity for a new beginning. So just know this, you never complete this journey because life is dynamic. We all have circumstances, situation, situations and events that arise over and over in our lives as long as we're breathing. So, but this is what happens when you use this experience, this process, you get better and it gets easier the more you use this process. So you can create structures of support to implement your new perspective on life. Supportive people, supportive habits, and supportive study. And here are some action steps that you can take. The first one is access your inner sanctuary. I read somewhere about a quote where tough times in our life is like a storm at sea. The waves are tumultuous and the wind sends the spray of the water high into the air. And yet if we go below the surface and deeper still, there's a calm and a quiet and a peace. You have that inside of you as well, that place inside of you that's calm, quiet, and peaceful. So, so create a space in your home where you can venture deep into your own inner sanctuary and go there. The second action step you can take is be willing to grow. Think of the butterfly and the caterpillar. They're one and the same being. But the caterpillar cannot fly until it embraces its own transformation. Then decide to think differently. Set new affirmations. Use them. Say them over and over. Tell yourself you are going to get the gift. Rewrite your story with a victorious ending. So what you do with and in your dark night determines your experiences in the future. It all starts with learning to think an empowering thought. And finally, I would say this. Decide. Decide for the life you want moving forward. And ask yourself, what would I love? 
So for more on this, I would invite you to revisit podcast number one, The Three Keys to Unlocking Your Potential. And please know this, if you are recently, if you've recently experienced a catastrophic event, such as the death of a loved one, I encourage you to seek a qualified professional counselor that specializes in your situation. That would be your first step. I want to thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time.